Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to the March 2024 channel update. This is the video where we talk about various ongoings of the channel, videos created, plans for the future, take a look at the behind the scene numbers. We have a lot of things to talk about this month, not the least of which is our Shelf of Shame Challenge update. In the last video, set aside a handful of games to definitely try to play in 2024 and the reviewer voted a set of three games too. We'll talk about which games won and get the full updated list. But I'll share an update on my progress in my own Shelf of Shame challenge. And I know a number of viewers designated their own Shelves of Shame challenges too. Be curious to hear how your Shelf of Shame challenge might be going as well. We'll also be giving away our $50 store gift certificate to Noble Night Games. Noble Night Games is a games retailer in Wisconsin that is one of the channel sponsors. Uh, they sell war games, new and used, Euro games, new and used, role-playing supplies, miniatures, anything you might be looking for in board gaming. Uh, they would be an awesome place to check out. I will also say that they've been a sponsor now of the channel for about three or four months, and I've got a chance to interact with them quite a bit. I'm just really impressed with not only their professionalism, but their passion and their energy for the value of board games and people getting together to play games in society. I think when you have an organization that you know, there's a lot of organizations that are professionally centered, right? They're, they're in it to make money and things like that. Um, and of course, Noble Knight Games is trying to make money in this sphere. They're a board games retailer, of course. But more than that, I think also they have a tremendous belief in the value of what people do around board games in society. And I think that shows in everything that they do and in a lot of the interactions I've had with them, which makes me more comfortable having them as one of the the channel sponsors so i've had nothing but great interactions with interactions with them as well and um, if you're looking for something in board gaming i highly recommend them there's links down below as we start out in the update one of the things i always do is take a look at the channel numbers and i have two months worth of data now january and february because i'm making this right at the beginning of march so i have all of the february numbers in Mar february numbers were down compared to january uh, that's kind of normal i think there's a number of reasons why and i'll talk a little bit about those but january almost hit that magic hundred thousand views mark which is ninety seven thousand views still a little bit short february's views were down to seventy seven thousand. there's a few reasons why i'm not too worried about it um hours watched likewise went from ten thousand one hundred hours in january which is really really good and then 8,600 hours in February which I'm, I'm happy with as well subscribers uh, January is 413 new subscribers and February was 342 new subscribers thank you to everybody as always who comments likes and subscribe to the channel uh, again I, I, I tell this all the time but the community behind this has been the most unexpected thing behind me like when I said I think I can want to make videos about board games and war games uh, that little initiative. I didn't expect that the community element would be one of the most fun parts about it. So thanks to everybody who's made been a part of that. Um, videos produced in January were, were 11 and in February were 11. Um, and then in regards to why I think the numbers might be a little bit down, February is a little bit shorter month for one thing. So you lose a couple days there, which is skews the numbers a little bit. I mean, also, I get sick in the middle of February. It wasn't COVID. It was just a bad cold. I, kind of, I didn't have a voice for about a week. I had it, but I couldn't make a video for like a week. So that went, pushed things sideways. And then third was, I think February in general is just a little bit lower than December and January in terms of people watching YouTube stuff, maybe. That's the way it seems to have gone for my channel over the past three years and things too. And then uh, lastly, um, I created some videos on PC games and those on the channel tend to get less views at this point than the ones on board games. So so uh, I finished up a series on that. We'll talk on a PC game series and we'll talk a little bit about that too. So I think for those reasons there, that represents why the numbers were lower in February a little bit and hopefully uh, hoping for a rebound in March, but I'm kind of comfortable with the way things are progressing and I'm happy with how things are going in that regard. Another thing I like to take an opportunity with in this channel update is to thank the Patreon members of the community. It's approaching 50 members right now. and I'm just extremely grateful for all of the things that your support enables. So please know that your support is greatly appreciated. Uh, two new members uh, this month, uh, Thomas Hawley and Charles Cleary. Thank you so much for joining and for, for being part of the community. One of the goals for this year too is, uh, I realize how much of a resource this community has been because these are people who really like the channel. Um, and I'm posting questions there and I've, I've done this over time, but I'm starting to realize just the incredible value of people's input because I can ask questions there and get people's thoughts and they provide a really good input into how uh, I might look at the channel and how I might move forward with things in the channel. So thank you not only for both the financial support that comes from the Patreon, but also for the energy that you bring towards supporting the channel. So I appreciate all of you. Thank you very much. 
And now let's dig into the games themselves. Let's start with the Shelf of Shame Challenge update. I'm curious how people are doing, but when we last left off, I think it's seven and then one optional game added in as the optional Shelf of Shame Challenge game. But there were three people's choice games to get brought in. And let's take a look quickly at the results of that voting here. So I'm looking now on the community channel. The first one was to pick one of the Simonich uh, apostrophe XX series games. And the four candidates were Normandy 44, Salerno 43, Holland 44, and Erdens 44. This one surprised me, Holland 44, um, wins this vote and gets added to the Shelf of Shame Challenge. I, I know a number of people in talking about the Simonich, the, the X44 series, a number of people have mentioned that Holland 44 is their favorite game, but I didn't think it would win this vote. I thought Ardennes 44 or Normandy 44, just perhaps more for the the significance of the campaigns, perhaps. Um, and not that Market Garden or Salerno weren't lesser campaigns, but I think both Normandy and the Battle of the Bulge, of course, are probably resonate at a higher level of familiarity than Market Garden, although it's right up there, I guess. But Holland 44, whatever, regardless of the point, Holland 44 wins and gets added to the Shelf of Shame Challenge. The second series was non-World War II games, Paths of Glory, World War I, U.S. Civil War from Mark Simonich as well, Zulus on the Ramparts, and then Almoravid, Levy and Campaign Series. Paths of Glory gets a resounding 40% of the vote and gets added to the challenge. I'm excited for this one because it has also, I think, um, Stuka Joe's solo card-driven system too as well. So I hope uh, to be able to kind of look forward and playing that game and exploring it through that lens too. Then... Our other one, World War II games, was uh, Eric Court, D-Day at Omaha Beach, Combat Commander Europe, and Target for Today. I was really curious to see how this one would progress. D-Day at Omaha Beach gets uh, the win here with 35% of the vote. So uh, this is a game, too, I started to play before. I'll talk about that when we look at the next little chart and things like that. But um, I started to play before, so I'm excited to get back to this one as one of the must-play games in 2024. Another aside, too, I'm also posting on the channel update about uh, twice a month, so every 10 days or so, I'm trying to go in there and post a Shelf of Shame Challenge update. So if you want to add how things are going for you, this would be a great place to comment as well in that. So here's a picture of Pax Winger, which I'll talk about momentarily. And then a most fearful most fearful, sac fearful sacrifice for about, from about 10 days ago. So feel free to jump in and add how yours are going when I post updates there. Um, with that in mind, let's take a look at, for all of you, gig Geeks rejoice. I made a spreadsheet for the Shelf of Shame Challenge update. So I've got all of the games on the side here on the left hand side. And then if we scroll across, I've made this little box thing. And I'm just kind of manually filling it in as to how I think I'm doing with the particular game. And the goal is to get all of the games to 100%. Um, this is publicly available. So I'll put a link down below in the description. You can see where things are. And then if it's complete, it's a no. Of course, as we look at this in all of the games of the Shelf of Shame Challenge, did I finish any game? in February? The answer is no. Now, but you might be thinking, oh, fail, right? But that, but hold on, hold on. That's not necessarily the case because check it out. Um, first of all, here, my most fearful sacrifice. I'm putting in what my played criteria is or are for each game because they're going to be different for each game. Um, some of it might be just, just play it twice. Others, I kind of want to get competent at it. Um, and my criteria for a most fearful sacrifice is fluent at the rules, uh, played two real scenarios and then record and post the playthrough videos on the channel for this one. Um, and I think uh, this will go February, March now, I think. And I'm about halfway done. I'm pretty much got the rules done. I've played one scenario. I, I don't quite have artillery dialed in yet and some like skirmish order and stuff like that. There's a few outlying rules I still have to clean up. But I'm getting to the point now I'm going to start to record and post the playthrough videos. So that will be coming up in March. But I say I'm about 50% done, which might sound like a fail, but... PAX Premier also got some energy last month too. Um, I played a uh, two-player game where we kind of collaborated against the Wakan, the solo AI bot, um, and played that a couple of weeks ago with Mike, and that was really fun. And then I've got one game, two games going now on PAX Premier, one with everybody on the Patreon channel. We've got a four-player game going. Now, True confessions, I haven't read the rules, right? I skimmed through the rules and I didn't quite understand them and I thought I could learn by playing. And I'm, I, I think I'm like halfway with the rules, but there's things like dominance, which is like an essential, essential component of the game that I, I really don't understand yet. I'm sorry. And then like overthrow rules and stuff like that. And then sometimes the, like on the rally, the troops, something will happen. I'm like, 
Hmm, that's not what I expected what would happen. So I, I do need to finish reading the rules and kind of make more progress in that and play more games here. But I'm like 30% there, I think. Certainly much lo- further along than I was at the beginning of last month. So uh, so I'd say 50% and 80%. 30% makes 80%. So good progress in February. But I'd love to hear how your challenges are going for this month in March. I want to finish Pax Premier and finish in Most Fearful Sacrifice. I'm not sure what's yet going to come next after that, but I'm staying focused on those. So there is the Shelf of Shame Challenge update update. For this next segment in the video, I want to expand on something I've always done in the channel before, which is I talk about the videos that I created. I want to expand this segment and new for this month then, talking about games I played and also videos I created, but the games that got to the table and the things I played in the previous month. So let's start. The first game I want to talk about is the Battle for Kalkin Goal. Created a three video series on this game. This covers the Battle of Kalkin Goal, which is the border conflict uh, between Manchuria and Mongolia. Russian occupied Mongolia and Japanese occupied Manchuria in 1939, right at the beginning of World War II. Uh, really fun game from Princeps Games. It has one scenario, but it's a type of game that as soon as you play, you're like, oh, wait, I think next time I want to try this. And thinking of that from both sides in the startup conditions, the way the startup and the setup works, it really enables multiple different, you're playing a different game each time because of the way the, the setups are going to be different. So I really enjoyed that. It's very, it's a low complexity rule set. So I think it'd be really good for kind of bringing people into Hex Encounters War Games. Um, probably a little bit above an introductory game, but certainly maybe like that step two type of thing. Big map, uh, lovely counters and things like that. Really enjoyed my time with that one. Uh, that one is in the late stages of crowdfunding right now. And I think it should be shipping sometime in the spring or, or summer. So I'll put a link down below, of course, to this um, if you're interested in checking out more. But I really like my time with that one. Uh, another thing, I talked about the Shelf of Shame Challenge. PAX Premier played two player with Mike, and then I'm playing uh, th- two games now on Rally the Troops. I want to play more of that in February. So if uh, they're un- in March, so if there are other Patreon members that want to jump in and we want to start another game, let's get another game going of PAX Premier by all means. Um, Twilight Struggle played one game of Twilight Struggle on Steam with Parkera. And uh, we played number three or four games. That's always fun. I still consider myself to be somewhat adept at the first deck of cards, moderately understanding the second deck of cards. But if the game gets into that third deck of cards, I have no idea what's going on because most of the games that I've played end before they get to that third deck. And I still don't have quite a good understanding of what cards are coming up. But a really fun game, of course, about the Cold War. It starts like 1945 and goes all the way up through 2000 or something like that. I, I'm going to get the end dates wrong, but I really like Twilight Struggle. I've always liked it. So played a game there. Uh, Votes for Women played a game opposed on uh, Rally the Troops. I've only played that game either collaboratively or solo. Uh, and to come in now and play it uh, against another human being. I was the opposition, which I didn't think I would like, right? Because you're trying to defeat women's suffrage in the United States over this you know, multi-decade decade game. I thought I wasn't going to enjoy that. It was actually kind of fun. It's I feel kind of guilty for saying that because right, you're trying to deny women the right to vote. That's not why I found it fun. I actually thought that's why I wouldn't find it fun. But basically what you're trying to do is just destroy things, right? As the opposition player, you're just trying to create chaos and havoc and break things and make things not go right and just... The, the suffrage player is trying to build up this network of support and you're just in there like a terrorist realize you're trying to mess stuff up for whatever reason. That was kind of fun. I, that kind of scares me to say that. Um, and I don't feel that it's, it has nothing to do with my real life values. Right. I mean, women's suffrage. Absolutely. Amazing. And I learned so much about women's suffrage playing this game um, over the past over the past year now. But. Um, and so, um, you know, that it has nothing to do with my values as a human being, but it was I, oddly fun in a way that I didn't expect to play the opposition in Votes for Women. And then I mentioned this in the previous segment, the Shelf of Shame Challenge, but I've got a most fearful sacrifice to the table now. I've got the second scenario set up. I should be starting that today. This is so much, it's like love at first sight. I I, I mentioned a number of times, I was gone from Wargaming for like 25 years. I've been back like three, almost three years now. And in that time coming back, I played a lot of World War II games. And that's kind of where my my biggest interest as a gamer lies. Although I'm interested in a wide range of stuff, probably I gravitate towards World War II stuff more than the others. I hadn't played a lot of American Civil War games um, since coming back. 
But jumping into a most fearful sacrifice is like, this is love at first sight. I just absolutely adore this engine and this system and the way that it orchestrates chaos in the game. And it just feels human as you're playing as things just happen and you got to deal with them and it's unpredictable. Fantastic for solitaire. Absolutely just really, really liking my time with this game. I can't get wait, can't wait to get back to it. And I will be making some videos on this one in March. So a most fearful sacrifice has been a big surprise. I, I mean, I knew it was a great game, right? It got war game of the year. I just wasn't sure it was going to resonate with my historical interests, but the gameplay is so good that it's really kind of opened my eyes to, it's like, I want to play a mo more American Civil War stuff now after having played this one. So really excited about both what it's opening up in terms of my uh, my kind of time and interest in the hobby, but then just how much fun this game has been. Love it for a sight with the most fearful sacrifice. I'm pretty sure when I do like my best games of 2024, that this will be one of the ones that's on that list. I mean, it's, it's that good. It's really, really good. Also spent some time with a couple of non-wargaming games. This is completely the antithesis of a war game, but Wingspan is a game that I absolutely adore. I've been playing with Huvian, uh, some uh, opposed asynchronous games. So basically we make like one turn a day. It takes us like a month to play a game. We finished one of those in February. We've got another one we just started now as well. Uh, but I just love this game. It's just so much, fun. It's, it's so chill and relaxing and you're just like, building birds and, and building this habitat. Not much of a competitive overlap, so it's kind of like you're each doing your own thing. Uh, but I just really like you just look at the birds and try the different things. I love just trying for some of the achievements too. I don't really focus too much on trying to get like the most points and stuff like that. I just like playing with the birds and seeing what they, you know, like making different collections and stuff like that. So I really, really like that game. It's really, really fun. Um, and then the second game, which is a Spirit Island. So played that game, played Spirit Island twice in the month of February, once with our works uh, board game club, and then once solitaire. Wow, this game is, is I'm surprised at the depth and complexity of this game now, because I when I first played it, I read through the rules and I played some of the beginner spirits. And that's what we did the first time we got together as our uh, work board game club. Um, and that was manageable and, and easy. But then this time when we got together, we played some of the more complicated, complex spirits that aren't the beginner levels. And if you're not familiar with the game, right, I should explain, you play the roles of spirits who are trying to uh, protect this island against colonization. That's a rough theme of it. And you can't directly influence things. So there's these little inhabitants on the island that you can kind of nudge and move around and stuff like that. But you're trying to work through them and then work through nature to basically wreak havoc on the colonizers and stuff. Uh, but these complex advanced spirits, because all of the rules, the rule book itself took me about an hour to get through, but with a card driven game, so many of the rules and mechanics sit on these cards that it's like relearning a new game when you take one of these other, the roles of one of these other spirits on. So I'm really liking it. I'm a little bit surprised by the complexity and the challenge of playing some of these advanced spirits. But I think with all its expansions and stuff like that, this will be a game that I'll kind of stick with and kind of have very kind of a slow burn over the course of a number of months because I'd like to get one good at it and like to continue playing at it. So a couple of non-war games there. Um, on the PC side, uh, three things. I finished, finally finished the SGS Battle for Stalingrad series that has started way back in September. It's so embarrassing. Uh, but there was like a two or three month gap lost on the last series of turns. I'm not bitter about this at all, um, but we didn't quite capture all of Stalingrad and then because we didn't do that, the Russians won. We had like two sectors left at one point to capture, but Russians just kept pouring in reinforcements. Really fun game. I, I'm not as big a fan of this Battle 4 subset with the, in the SGS games, which I really, really like. I think there's some issues with the way the Battle 4's activation system works. That means you're creating kind of stacks of doom, and it's a little bit... I like the way you, when you can activate all of your forces in the other games and the way they play, um, but it still captures Stalingrad really, really well. I'm going to play it again to see if I can actually win it to take the whole city because we were so close. So, so close. Um, otherwise, I've, I've been playing uh, War Game Design Studios. I've started learning Battles for, of North Africa. I think that'll be one of the next PC games that I bring to the channel. So just kind of scratching the surface with that very complex system uh, that really captures a lot of marvelous elements with uh, combat. So this is, you know, Hex Encounters PC Wargaming in the sense of very traditional war games. So I'm really looking forward to exploring this game. And then lastly, uh, playing some Crusader Kings 3, which I'll be making a series for on the other channel. 
So all in all, I feel like considering the fact that I was sick for a week in February and things like that, and it's a shorter month, it was a good month of gaming. I'm, I'm happy with the progress on the Shelf of Shame Challenge. I'm happy with the videos created and really looking forward to March and things coming up in March to move forward with everything. So fun time so far. The goal, One of the goals is fun, and it was a really fun month in February. New segment this month is what's new and in the house. So what have I picked up over the course of the past month or what's come in that we'll be looking at in some degree, in some manner on the channel uh, over the course of the upcoming months. Some of these have already made it to the channel. Uh, Panzer North Africa in from GMT Games. Really looking forward to this one. This is one of the optional games on the Shelf of Shame Challenge. Uh, the production quality and the components and the stuff in there, the number of scenarios has blown away my expectations for what I was expecting. It's, a, you know, I think a three and a half inch box and it is packed, literally packed to the brim with maps, scenarios, counters, all this kinds of fun stuff. So really looking forward to digging into that one later in the year. Uh, and then two uh, promotional copies, Alao 1807 from Sound of Drums Games. Really beautiful production. There's a first look video up on the channel for that one. I'm really excited kind of with this idea of broadening out beyond uh, a kind of a World War II centered wargaming approach. And especially now that I've really discovered that I really like the Civil War games, I'm thinking, I'm going to probably like Napoleonic games, maybe as much as I like the Civil War, maybe as much as I like World War II. So like my entire world ga wargaming hobby has just kind of exploded in breath, I think, over the course of the past month. Um, and just like, really excited about a lot of areas that I looked at and said, yeah, I'd kind of like to play something there. And now it's like, oh, wow, I kind of want to check this out and really want to see what it's like. So really excited for how my hobby is kind of transforming in this early stages of 2024. Um, Elau 1807 and a most fearful sacrifice, I think perhaps playing a role in that. Another game in the house from Sound of Drums is Hellas, Heroes of the Ancient Seas. Uh, this is a really interesting game. This one is Athens versus Sparta, but there's a number of kind of empires and reigns that you can play in this series. Three different games came out all at the same time. Um, you get the one that has the number of players you think you're most likely going to play with. So Hellas is solitaire and two player version, which made the most sense for me. But then I think there's a two to four player version. And then I think a three to five player version of the game. And they have different countries, different maps, different components and things like that. So really looking forward to this one. This one again, Athens versus Sparta. I'm excited to check out that solo module and kind of going in theme with like Alao, Most Fearful Sacrifice. I feel like my interests and hobby is gaining, is growing quickly beyond the World War II uh, emphasis dominance that it's had over the first couple of years here. So really looking forward to checking out Hellas. There will be a first look video of the, uh, of the game coming up on the channel soon for that one. And then lastly, going back to the idea of uh, Wingspan is Wingspan's new brother, Wormspan. So this is Wingspan with dragons. Um, I've heard really good things about it. It just arrived a couple days ago. And I've heard really good things about it in terms of uh, it's different enough from Wingspan and yet has that same thematic element. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. I think Wingspan's really, really fun, but I'd be interested to see what a slightly more complex, deeper game that involves dragons would look like. So very much looking forward to that one. I probably won't play this one super soon because I'm thinking I'll probably play it with uh, my daughter when she comes back, but I might try out the solo module. So that's new what's in the board games category. A few new things to talk about in the PC side because some will be coming up on the channel as we go forward, but uh, War Games Design Studio has provided uh, copies of th a game in each one of their three of their different categories. So I'm gonna pull up their uh, website here so we can take a quick look. This is uh, their game series. And if you're not familiar with War Game Design Studios, they make traditional hex encounters PC based war games and they have tons of them in there. The ones they've sent along is in their Panzer Battle series. It's going to be Battles of North Africa. You're taking a look at that one. And this series is a smaller kind of ranged combat level series that they have. So if we look at it here, the Panzer Battles fit into a scale between squad battles and Panzer campaigns. Each hex is 250 meters a turn equals 30 minutes and there's platoon units. So this one uh, that I'm looking at will be uh, the Battles of North Africa, 1941. Then a second one in their campaign series that I'm really excited to look, I'm looking for is in their Panzer campaign series, which is a level higher, in, a level larger. So these are uh, the games that are, each hex is a kilometer and there's two hour turns. So the scale is more operational than it is tactical, although still at kind of a granular battalion and company level uh, interaction. The one they have sent along is Shelt 44, which I understand from what I understand about it. People mentioned this one as I was kind of looking at their stuff is uh, they have it has just an amazing 
uh, campaign game for Market Garden. So I'm really looking forward to, to giving this one a shot. And all of these will be brought to the channel over the course of 2024. It's going to take a while to learn them and then think about how I want to create content for them. But kind of a slow burn. You should see some of these coming to the channel as things go forward. And then lastly, they have a tactical series in the newly updated, let me just back out of this, Squad Battles series. So this is a uh, hex scale is 40 meters per hex in five minute turns. So really much more a tactical level. And one that they have uh, recently updated and, and produced is Eagle Strike. So this is again, summer of 1944. Americans are ready to strike at the heart of Fortress Europe. And that's kind of the theme within the area that you're working at. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how these uh, play out and how these games look as well. So uh, really fun games. I've heard really good stuff about War Game Design Studio. So I'm looking forward to digging into to some of their games. And then last, Lastly, the last new thing that I got, uh, Crusader Kings 3 newest expansion is Legends of the Dead. It's part of four things that came out in 2024. I bought the whole thing in like a package and stuff. And this one I didn't realize it comes out tomorrow as I'm making this. So I'm really enjoying Crusader Kings 3 and I'll be bringing some of that content to the other channel. And this will be something I'll be looking at as we uh, go forward as well. So those are the games that are new and in the house in the month of February. And I kind of kind of let me know if you like this feature, because I'm thinking to make it kind of a regular part of the channel updates. So that's a look at what February entailed. Looking ahead to March, um, a most fearful sacrifice playthrough video is coming. I've also got We Are Coming Nineveh set up on the second learning table. I haven't started it yet, but it's there. And I'm going to try to learn that and bring content up or that probably after a most fearful sacrifice. And then there's a vote on the channel right now. Fortress Games. Uh, either 8th Air Force or 20th Air Force. I'm going to do an AAR style playthrough of one of those two games. So if you have a preference, go vote for that one. So those are kind of the three playthrough series that should show up um, over the course of March and things. Then there'll be some first look videos and other random videos and things that happen and stuff like that. So really looking forward to it. February was a really fun month. I feel like things are going really well with the channel. And um, I'm just really excited to keep going at this plate. The goal again has been fun for 2024. It always is. I had a ton of fun in February despite the week long cold. So I'm really looking forward to it to March as well. But last but not least, it's time to pick our $50 store credit winner to Noble Knight Games. Uh, the, entered this competition, you had to go to Pushing Cardboard's channel, leave a comment on this video about Axis Empire's Ultimate Edition unboxing with the hashtag Blitzed, and then also saying something nice about the channel or the video. Thanks to everybody who did that. I, I think uh, Pushing Cardboard expressed his uh, gratitude to everybody uh, in, in a kind of couple comments to me as well. And I'm just really glad he's got a fantastic channel, brilliant mind with Wargaming. So I hope people enjoy his channel as well. And I'm sure, sure you will. But let's pick our winner. I've got all of the comments assembled here and stuff like that. We're going to scroll down here to our random picker. It's keyworded by Blitzed and all duplicate entries are filtered out. I'm going to press the start button and we're going to get a winner here. Here we go. John Smith 9518 as the winner here. So congratulations to John. Now you've got, I'm going to give you about a week to uh, put a comment in this video using the same uh, address you used for that video. And then we'll figure out how we can get in touch. All I really need from you is to get your email that connects to your Noble Knight account. And then they'll put the, the credit right into your account. So put a comment down below. I'll give you about a week or 10 days to respond to that. Thanks everybody for playing. We've got a contest in mind for next month. It's going to be a puzzle. So something a little bit different. Look for that next giveaway then on the upcoming War Games edition, which should come out in about a week or two on the channel. And so we'll be doing another $50 giveaway to uh, Noble Knight. And there's a couple of other giveaways coming, one other giveaway coming up on the channel this month as well. So keep your eyes peeled out for that too. And that brings us to the end of this month's channel update. I feel like we covered a lot of ground. Hopefully this isn't like a massively long video because I try to keep them about 20, 30 minutes at the most. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you know, what you think about some of the new features, things like uh, what I played over the course of the month, new and in the house and stuff like that. I'd also be very curious to hear um, how people's shelves of challenge, shelves of shame challenge are, are going too. I want to keep the momentum for that and that starting out strong is important. So if you haven't made progress yet, don't give up. You can still do it. We believe in each other. We got this, right? Um, also, if you have feedback, ideas, input onto how to improve these cha channel updates, I'm always open for ideas and things like that too. So I'd love to get your input there. We'll see you again in a video soon. Congratulations to our $50 store credit giveaway. And thank you as always for all of the likes and support and comments and for Patreon support and things like that that you've given over the channel over the 
approaching three years now that it's been focused um, to a large degree on tabletop gaming and tabletop war games and PC war games as well. Thanks, everybody. Have a great month.